So this is super exciting. I'm glad we're filming this because we're back now and we are talking, Ange, to you again because you just yeah. went through <laughs> another realm of your music career in a really short time frame. So um, <laughs> why don't you talk about it? Why don't you say what the heck, yeah. you know, happened? <laughs> I mean, okay, the last time we did, the when we did the first one, it was, May I think so at that point I had just started my sales process in terms of like we're doing the reach outs and booking calls and everything um and I don't think in May I had any closes but in June I ended up closing seven clients and it was just crazy like I had hit my goal for the month for the month halfway through and like we were just so excited and I always kept telling Lee how happy I was and how excited I was um, and we were celebrating and it's been great, but there's still a lot to improve on. Um, there's still like more to do. So, yeah. When you, yeah. And like super congrats on that. Like, you know, to close seven production Thanks. clients in your first month of even trying to sell production is, it's pretty cool. You know? Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. So talk about like, cause you know, people might be watching this. And they never watched the first video or whatever. So talk about. True. Going when you when we first linked up, because I've heard you say this before. What was your goal when we first right. linked up? Yeah, when I first got on the phone with Lee, my goal was to feel like a professional, mm. whether it was like an artist producer. Like at that point, I was really focusing on my artist career, so it was like I really just wanted to feel like I knew what I was doing and confident in my role as an artist. Um, and we talked a lot about this, like whether it was like, you know, making money that would make you feel professional or it was like, um, you know, what we were doing, but it was the mindset, right, of like turning into a professional producer. And um, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, because it was only like four or five months when it like I really had that shift. Um, we've only been working together for six months, so it must have been like four months. But yeah, um, so definitely what I wanted was to feel more professional and now I can like really easily say that I feel like a professional producer and I know what I'm doing and I'm confident that everything I'm doing makes sense like I'm doing it because I understand it not just because I think this is what I'm supposed to do hmm. you know the thought that rang in my head was like before you started and you said to yourself I want to feel like a professional mm -hmm. what did that look like for you at that time professional it seems like so out of reach. It seemed um, like, honestly, I think it was followers. I think it was followers, clients, um, having something to show for yourself. Cause I felt like, even though I'd been doing this for so long, like I didn't really have like, I guess accolades to say like, oh, I have had, I could say like, oh, I've had this many streams or whatever, but I guess that didn't really matter to me. It was more like reach that I was going for or like audience. Mm -hmm. But I would also say my goals are different now. Um, because I've pivoted mm. to being a producer that like I guess I realized I don't really care that much like on the on at a general genuine like level I don't really care that much about being famous what I really want is to be in the music industry and like work in the industry what do you mean by that um I think that was like a transition I had to make because I think being an artist you're at the front you're in the spotlight you, everything kind of comes from you but as a producer, you're helping other artists. Mm. So it's just, a, it's a different, it's a different game. It's a different role. Um, you have different responsibilities, right? So I think now just being able to help other people and like seeing them happy after we get to put out, like we were just talking about this. So I got to produce a song um, for a, my client. Her name was Annie Leka and she, it was her first song. Um, and I got to produce that for her. And she was so excited when her first single dropped and just being able to do that and help somebody like that is like, that's what I want to do. It's it's like, I like the background stuff. I don't need to be in the spotlight. That's super interesting. So, um, mm. but before you were like, that's interesting because before you were dropping a single a week, you were doing that for a, an amount of time. Yeah. And um, were there any, like, what were kind of the mindset shifts that you needed to make um, between 
when you first started with the program, you were just learning music production mm -hmm. to up your skills. And now you're in this new realm of like owning a business and like making money as a producer. What were the mindset yeah. shifts you had to go through in that transition? I think it was a, a lot of um, reflection on why I'm doing certain things. Like I always, I enjoyed being a self-producing artist, but I really enjoy composition and arrangement. And hmm. um, I think it just ended up figuring out, for me, it was figuring out what I, where I saw myself in 10 years. Like we would talk about our my goals. And I think something you pointed out to me was that I didn't have very concrete goals of where I wanted to see myself in five years, 10 years, hmm. or even when I graduate. So for me, it was when I looked forward and I had to think like, where do I actually see myself in five years? Like, what do I want to be doing and what would make me happy, but what would also make me feel successful? And for me, that was working in the industry, but not necessarily as an artist. Um, so I'm not sure if that was a mindset shift, but it was more of a realization. Mm -hmm. Okay. that That is a mindset shift for sure, but I get what you mean. Like it was more of like a realization of what your role really wants to be. Mm -hmm. I had to go through something similar myself. I'm still kind of going through it. Like I'm still an artist. I'm still putting out my own music, but I've realized like I care more about the music business side than the industry side. And so I'm like super into business. Like I love business. I'm passionate about it. Like I fuck with that. I just as much, just as much as I like making beats, mixing, mastering, I fucking love business. I really do. And that's awesome. Yeah. But I realized like the skills and the business acumen that I wanted to participate in, I couldn't do in, as an artist. Because building an artist career is like way different than the career I'm building now. You mm -hmm. know, like building an online mentorship program around music production is like, I get to flex the business skills that I've always wanted to flex. And I couldn't do that as much with like songs and CDs and merch. I don't like merch. I don't even care about the clothes I wear. So it's like, why would I be like <laughs> trying to make a merch line? You know, like I'm not, yeah. even, I wear plain white and black shirts all the time. It's just, it was so hard to resonate with that. And I still want to do mm -hmm. something, but it was like the same kind of realization as you was like, I love helping and mentoring and coaching and motivating and being around a group of folks that all want to get better. Like our group calls have become. And I get yeah. that more out of the mentorship than I do just being an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I feel the exact same because um, the things I'm doing now, even though like we just talked about it being like very business focused and a lot less focused on like making music. Um, I still like each part of it. And I think I like it more than I did when I was just an artist or before we started working together, because now I also have a plan. I have an idea of how I'm going to get to my goal. And it's not just like, Oh, I have a goal that in five years I'm going to make, I don't know, a million dollars, but mm. like, I had no idea of how I could get there. Um, so now I'd say, even though I'm not making music every day or, well, I'm not making beats every day, um, then I'm, I still like enjoy every little thing that I'm doing, even if it's just sending a DM or booking a call. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, you're <laughs> coming to a realization like that of, you know, it's not all about the music, mm -hmm. right? Especially in the, this business, right? And I, similarly to you, I enjoy business. Um, I have always liked and had a very entrepreneurial mindset. So for me to be able to like learn more about business and expand my business while also being in the music business and doing what I, what I love to do, it's, it's like the biggest win for me. Mm. I'll be very direct. I have a, a question I want to ask. That's like a very direct question. Well, mm -hmm. the context is direct. So I wanted to ask it. So like, okay. because I love business, I love teaching it too. Like when we, like we just mm -hmm. did our, you and me just did that, that marketing work. Yeah. I fucking love talking about shit like that. Like that shit's so cool. Um, And I love talking about compression and I love talking about our recording template, like the combo. Mm -hmm. And I realized for you, like you're the perfect client because it's like you, we get to do both and I do mm -hmm. it for artists as well. But I, 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 I enjoy the marketing of like what you and I are doing 
as opposed to the marketing mm -hmm. that an artist would be doing. Because you get the wins, like the wins you get are easier. Like to make one, two, three grand a month as a producer is way fucking easier than as an artist. So I have yeah. this dream and it's like, it's not like a dream. It's kind of like what I would like to do with my program. Like I want to take okay. it to a place of like, you're an artist that's like entrepreneurial and you want to become what you're doing. Oh, pretty sure. Okay. But, but like you, but you, I know you still want to put out music, right? Yeah. Like I still, I still make music sometimes. Um, and we made songs like, or I made songs, right. In the program, um, in the first part, but, um, I'm not really looking to like put out music right now Okay. because mostly though, because of all the other things that come with it. Like I love releasing music. I love being able to play my stuff on Spotify and my family, my friends, my closest fans, whatever. But I don't want to go through the process of like marketing it and having to worry about who's re who's listening to it and like can we get it farther out there? Can we get it on playlists and whatever? Like I I really don't care about any of that right now. Yeah, I feel you. I yeah, you go down a whole rabbit hole. But I think like I want to try to transition it to like because here's the thing: if you're an independent hip hop artist with a full time job, like mm -hmm. Henry, he's our newest guy. Like he just asked like, hey, like I want to go full time with my music you know i'm like well dude honestly like the best way to do it is becoming probably becoming a producer yeah because, even if it's on the side yeah like i was gonna yeah. talk to him because i had told him if you have money you should be an artist because you can run ads but now you and i are talking about running ads as a producer and i'm kind of thinking like maybe he might want to do that i'm just thinking like the wins monetarily that you get come so much faster and easier with producing than an artist yeah I, I'm comfortable saying this and you can cut it out if you want, No, but um, I made more money this month than I do in two weeks at my full-time job that I'm paid for. I won't cut it and out. And that was like yeah. while working my full-time job. So mm. if I was just doing this, like I actually kind of wish I didn't work a job this summer because I did have the opportunity not to, like I, you know, I live in my parents' house, but like, so like in retrospect, I wouldn't have, because if I was doing, just doing music full-time, just doing producing, I think I could have, I could have made more than I would in a month at my full-time job because you maybe could send 70 dms a day instead of 50 yeah or make sure. more beats or whatever no exactly there'd be more time to allocate to this right or we could have started marketing earlier or something like that right who knows so um yeah no I get it I mean yeah so like that's kind of where I want to see things going but we'll mm -hmm. we'll, we'll find out I'm, I'm curious as to like what did make you want to transition when you were, I mean, I guess you kind of said it, but I want to hear mm -hmm. a little more. You were like, Hey, like, cause at first you came into this as a self-producing artist. Now you're like, I'm an artist. I produce for other, or I'm a producer that produces for other artists I'm building a business out of that. What made you make that change? I think there were two things. Like one is that I had never just made beats before. Like I would always make songs mm. before we started working together. So when I just ended up just like making beats, I was making like a beat a day for like three months. That was so much fun. I had the best time doing that, even in the mixing and mastering. Um, like, I just, I think I fell in love with music again through just doing that. And it was like a new way to express what was kind of going on in my head. So there's that. And then also the aspect of business, like we had talked about um, how it's, not easier but you can build a business faster in music production than being an artist and I was like I'm just ready to build my business like like I could I could be an artist when I'm 30 if I want to but right now I want to build my business like that's what I want to do and because we figured out that or we established that it's faster to do it in music production I was like great that's what we're doing then you know most artists probably think that exact opposite they switch it I can build my business later. I want to do my music now because music's a young man's game. That's what most people say. Music is a young person's thing. Being an artist. Yeah, but if you... It's a limiting yeah. belief, but that's what people think. Yeah. Your thoughts? Um, well, the other, the other thing that we had talked about, and I think with your like original plan was like if um, an artist decides to like become a producer like I did from their program, then they would use the money from production to go back into their artist career, right? And I, that's kind of also what I'm thinking is like, you know, maybe by the time I'm 28, 30, I don't know, I might feel like, 
I want to be an artist. And by that point, I will be financially free to want to do that and be able to market my music. And also by then, the music is going to be amazing. Like mm-hmm. if I've been producing for the next 10 years, like the production level then is going to be way better than it was when I was 17. Right. So yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that was the big thing for me. That's a good point. I mean, the way I look at it, and maybe it's the way you look at it, like for my for the music academy, my mm-hmm. now, like now the purpose of my own personal music is branding for the music academy. Because it's yeah. like, well, if you hear me producing a track and it's hot, and I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, yo, you should produce your own music, you're gonna believe it. And on top of it, if it's streaming well, if it's doing numbers, I'm like trust me, self-producing is better. Look, but if I was getting weak ass numbers, mm-hmm. people be like, well, is self-producing really better? That's or, true. you know, I have the CD sales to back it up too. Mm-hmm. But like, that's kind of where my excitement's coming in with music. I'm like, yo, my music makes me more money than it was before yeah. because like, it's just branding and proof of concept for my music academy. That's interesting because I hadn't thought about it like that in terms of my career, but it also works the same. Um, like 100%. for me, being a, a producing a self producing artist, like yeah, because I mean that's what I do when I'm in the like messaging, right? It's like I'll send the songs that I made um, in May, and so yeah, actually, that's a really good idea. Maybe I maybe in a couple a year, maybe I'll drop a song, but like I'm not looking to do that right now. Well, I mean, you have art when an artist drops a song with your production, that's almost like you're dropping a song in a way. Yeah. Anything that's yeah, proof yeah. of concept for you. Mm-hmm. Right. Anything proof of concept that your production is dope. It doesn't even have to stream well. That's the coolest thing about yours because you're not even promising yeah. it. I'm not either, but you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I have a song that I produced for myself in 2020 that I think got like 10,000 streams on Spotify and I didn't do any marketing. So, or any like real marketing. So like, that's probably the most successful song I have, but I don't like promote that. But I do send people the song I made with Kieran, like all the time, because I love that song. And it's a song I listen to myself. So it makes me even more excited to send it out to other like incoming um, clients or prospective sure. prospects. So yeah, no, that's definitely a good point though. Every Any song that I produce is also like a release for me. Yeah, exactly. So, all right, well, so you're at set, you got seven production clients in the month of June. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Which is insane. You're 19. You have two more yep. years of university, right? Yeah. <laughs> what challenges are you going through now? I gotta admit, my life is pretty, pretty solid. I'm not gonna say I have no challenges, but. Um... No, you can't say that. No, I know I do have challenges. It's just things are easier now. Um, no, the biggest thing right now is time for sure, because I'm working full time and I also am doing this program and I'm like working my business full time, definitely managing time and also work life balance is a big challenge for me because I went through the whole month of June. Like, yeah, I closed seven clients, but I didn't go see my friends. I don't think I, I barely saw my family. Like I didn't really go out. So that's like something I'm trying to balance is like being able to still do really great in a month, seven clients. That's awesome. But like also still have a social life and like have fun. So that way I'm still motivated to go back to it. I'm not feeling burnt out. Um, Yeah. So that'd be a challenge. Oh, and then actually this kind of goes um, hand in hand with that, but just taking better care of myself because you're right. I'm like halfway through university. I'm not even into the point where I'm doing this, like as my full-time career yet. That'll be like when I graduate. So I'm still so early on in my whole um, career. So I'm just trying to take care of myself so that I don't burn out and I don't, and I can last. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. You and me both. You <laughs> and me both. I mean, yeah, I was just talking today to one of my mentors. We 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 talked about that, you know, he's way more, well, He's just like financially like way more successful. He's been in the game longer, but uh, Mm -hmm. you know, he was talking about that. He was saying like, you know, you want to have like that, that, you know, things outside of your craft that are of interest to you for him, for him, it's basketball for me. It's obviously music for you. It's music. And it's like, because yeah, you gotta have, you gotta give yourself that time away, you know? Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. That's, 
yeah, <laughs> that's been a struggle for me for a while. So that's something like I'm constantly working on. Um, and I think I'll be working on for a very long time. I don't think it'll ever end. Uh, I think we talked about that actually, that there's no like perfect balance. It's a, it's a continuous journey. Um, those are probably my biggest struggles or challenges. Like anything else is probably specific to sales, like challenges. Mm. Um, yeah. You know, and this all kind of started from you're at this place where you would take, I kind of want to bring it full circle, right? You're at this place where you would take, oh, around three months to finish a song start to finish. So you were already, you had a production background. So what were, like, where were you, like, at what place were you at mentally at that point? That was like not a good point. That it was about second semester, right? Because it was February. Um, yeah, definitely wasn't a good point mentally. Like, I think I was just very overwhelmed with a lot to do because I was also working part time and full time in school. Um, I think, I think I kind of used this program as like, I'm just gonna throw everything into this and like hope to God it works out because I just like, Sick. honestly, like, I swear to God, I hope my mom doesn't see this, but she like, she'd be so angry. I, I spent all my money on this program. Like I had no money in my bank account. I, I my credit card had a thousand dollars limit and I put seven fifty on this as the, on the first day that we had a call and I was making like 300 bucks bi-weekly. <laughs> like this was kind of like, I was just ready to do something and bake something of myself. And I was like, if this is going to be it. And I trusted you pretty much from the first to second call that we had. I was like, this guy seems legit. Let's go. <laughs> and I'm just open to opportunities. So I was like, it seems like the right thing to do. And I remember even right after I was like, shit, like if this doesn't work out, I don't know what I'm going to do, but it did. So hmm. that's where I was at mentally. I got choked up a little. <laughs> why? Uh, why did like I didn't know that? And actually, this is the first time yeah. here. I didn't realize how all in you were. Yeah. Well, I just felt like I I'd been doing, like I was dropping a song a week, right? And I felt like I was doing what seemed like the right things from what I had watched on YouTube or read in articles and seen from other artists' careers, but it wasn't the right thing for me. And I think that working with you gave me an opportunity to see, to actually see like firsthand um, a successful artist career, like modern successful artist career, but like in the past, like, you know, few years. Um, so I think that opportunity and just, um, yeah, you were probably the first like real industry connection. I felt like, like I just had. Just so yeah. funny that someone even just said that about me. Like I'm an industry connection. Yeah. You're, 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 yeah. You're that's my weird. industry connection. That's weird. <laughs> I'll accept it, but that's weird. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, wow. Cool. So like what made it. Okay. This is what I want to know. You said, you know, you, you thought you said I looked legit. Like I could get you to that place. I want to yeah. know though the place of like pain you were in that made <laughs> okay. you that, because that also was a motivator yeah I want to know about that what was the place you were in that you were like this just something need to change what was that what made what was the place of pain you were in I think a lot of it is like I got a song a week not getting many rewards from it trying to market it, seeing like no improvement, kind of like an increase in followers, but no increase in like streams, which then also makes no increase in money. I was like, I had no idea how I was going to make money for my music. And even though it's two years away, I was still thinking about it because I was like, when I graduate, I'm gonna have to do something and I really don't want to go work for somebody else. So how am I gonna make this work? And it kind of felt like you were handing me a lifeline. Fuck. 
So you were yeah. worried about not knowing what you were going to do with your music career? Well, yeah. Like that's, I think a lot of artists probably think about that like almost every day, but they have no idea how to act on it, how to fix it. Like, like how do you market music? How do you make good music? How do, where do you find produce? Like all these things, right? That you have to figure out as an artist. I feel like it's constantly going through our heads, but you're like, what do you do? And for me, having one-on-one -on -one mentorship is like, that's probably the best thing that ever could have happened. I honestly, like, like going from some random program or something, like you're not going to have the same kind of experience as you would working with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, I think that idea of what you just said of like not knowing what you were going to do with your music career. Mm -hmm. And I'm an overthinker. Like I'm a, I'm a, a severe overthinker. So for me, when I say like, I would think about it every day, like I'm serious, like it would be like an everyday, like it would at least cross, like cross my mind, which is like, is stressful with time. Like it becomes very overwhelming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. It's a lot. I mean, I am too. I overthink a lot of things and mm, I would say I overact and underthink. It's actually mostly what mm -hmm. I do. I, I I do that a lot. Um, I do that too. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to balance, um, but I know I know what you mean. Yeah. You know, and so now I can tell you what I see, but I want to know what you see in terms of your career now. Like before, you didn't know what you were going to do. Two years, mm -hmm. you're like shit. I don't know how I'm going to make money. Uh, well, now what do yeah. you think? Well, now I feel completely different. Even if I think. Actually, I never even think I don't know how I'm going to do it because I already am doing it. I just know if I keep doing what I'm doing, like now that we've gotten to the point where I'm actually making money and like producing sales, I know that if I keep doing what I'm doing and I follow this process, I can scale it, right? Like that's what we've talked about from the beginning is like scaling it to 10K a month. So already knowing that there's a, a, a structure laid out for you, that'll tell you, that'll show you like if you just do this, like all you have to do is act. And that makes it very easy for me when I have like a routine. So if I can just say, okay, I send 50 DMs every day and I book as many calls as I can conduct those calls. And those are my like main things that in like fulfillment, that's, that's easy for me to say like, okay, I just do this and that's how I will get there. Versus before I was like, I have no clue how I'm getting there and I'm just going to keep trying until it's like, um, what is that? Uh, there's a phrase when you throw something at a wall and until it sticks it's like just like throwing things at a wall until it sticks um whatever that is like that's what I felt like I was doing just waiting for something to stick I think they say throw paint at a wall isn't that what they say or they I think I people know. say throw shit at a wall or something like that <laughs> I don't know whatever but that's what that's what it was yeah that's what it was and now you have something exactly so now that honestly that thought never crosses my mind I would say I'm like a lot less stressed or overwhelmed than I was in February. That's for sure. <laughs> That's awesome. The process that you're doing now of, you know, basically mm -hmm. it's like DMing a bunch of artists, like getting on conversations, getting them on a call, closing them and working with them. When you didn't know how to make money with your music and you were trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And now where you're at now with it, was it what you thought it was going to be, the process? I thought it was going to be so much more complicated. The funniest part is all you do is send DMs. Like, that's it. Just every day send DMs. It sounds like it should be very simple. And yeah, I get in my head about it and make it more complicated than it needs to be. But it's way more simple than I thought it was going to be. Like, I was expecting, that, I don't know, to run a marathon every day, like to put that kind of effort in you know, but, and even though I am doing stuff every day and I am working like 12, 14 hours, like I still enjoy it. You work 12, um, 14 hours, including your other job though, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not just on your music. No. I don't want I people wish. thinking I'm going to tell them to work 12, 14 hours. That's what they're going oh, to no, do. Oh no, no. And you don't have to. That's right. like my, everybody thinks I work too much and I just tell them to fuck off. Um, wow. <laughs> so... Whoa. <laughs> no, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Um I kind of lost my train of thought there. 
sorry i got you you you, you went you went fire on me i was like okay yeah no you were saying like um i was asking you if the process was what you thought it was going to be yeah way simpler uh, honestly it's it's easier than i thought and having the accountability of being able to text you if i don't mm-hmm. feel like sending my dms that day or like you know if we just want to hop on a quick phone call just to like kind of get my mindset straight right. like that's that's a huge um a game changer for me um because I wouldn't always like I don't really feel comfortable with most people to say like to reach out and say like oh I'm having a problem but when it's with you because it's like business based and like I pay you to be my coach it's like I have somebody there that I'm supposed to reach out to and it's um it's it, it kind of makes it all worth it it makes sense you know like if anybody ever asks you why they should invest in this program like just like, accountability is probably one of the biggest things that I would say because most people don't feel especially when it comes to their music careers like they don't know who to ask right yeah I would say too I want to know this about you you're solo dolo right mm-hmm. like you're you don't have a team mm-hmm I don't have a team. I think that we'll build teams. Mm -hmm. But God damn, I talked to a lot of artists who are like, oh, I got, I got a team. You know, I have a producers around me or I have this, then the third or all my homies and I are building together or other artists are like, oh man, I need a team. I need a fucking team, 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 team. I'm like, what the fuck are you guys talking about? What, what team? So I want to get your thoughts. If you disagree with me, by the way, like totally open to it. Like, mm-hmm. but I'm just curious. No, like, I um, yeah. Where are you at with that whole yeah. like, team thing? I have some different opinions. I think it depends on why you think you need a team. Um, it depends Fire. on like it also depends on the phase of your career that you're in. You know, um, I I think if your teammate, whether it's a producer, whether it's a manager, or whatever, if they balance your skill set and they're adding value then like they're complimenting your skill set then that's helpful you don't need a team though like if you ask russ if he had a team when he started he would fucking tell you no it was just him so like he I had his boys though right like he had homies he was rapping with and they they were support like he had that team but it was like yeah but he had his he didn't have a producer and a manager yeah. and, a, and a book he was doing it all himself yeah exactly yeah he was still doing it himself that's yeah that's what i mean and like a team in that case is more like a support system. Like you could say our rapid fire group is a team then. Right. Yeah. But it's like, I guess it is a gang. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's like, I have that same thing with my homies, like my best friend, Gabe, you know, I've got I've, dude, mm-hmm. fucking my list goes on, but it's like nobody else is affecting my numbers. My mm-hmm. revenue, my return on ad spend, my client fulfillment is, this human right here for right now i'm looking to bring on a team member but right now it's this and it's like Mm -hmm. i think that having a team the way they put it like oh no i need a team to build with it's like i don't agree Mm -hmm. with that i don't think that in the very beginning that's what you should do well i think that's the difference between an entrepreneur and just an artist burn (laughs) burn talk about it what do you mean like if you're an entrepreneur, you have a vision and you're willing to stick to that and make it yourself. Like a lot of entrepreneurship is wanting to do it yourself. And I think just being an artist means great. You want to be a singer songwriter. You want to be a rapper. Awesome. But you might not have that same hustle or drive to be, well, a self-producing artist or a freaking like, or to be a, you're not going to be your, my point is that an entrepreneur and artist like one is more of a business mindset and you're thinking okay to do anything right now I'm the only person who can do this right an artist is sitting around waiting there for somebody else to do it for them how fucking annoying is that so (laughs) annoying yeah I actually use that team line a lot though like when I'm on a sales call I'll say like oh I'll be your teammate you know like what I always ask actually like what's your team look like right now because that's a big part of the selling for me is like, I'll, I'm going to be your team. Like you have somebody on your team. Here's the difference in what you're doing though. You are actually being a teammate. 
you are yeah. contributing oh, yeah. to them. Yeah, that's a better way to put it. You mm-hmm. know, you're not creating a yo, let's build together, homie, which just means give free shit away. You're building exactly. a partnership with somebody like, yo, I'm a service provider. You have your service of being an artist. I have mine. Mm-hmm. Let's come together. Because what people, yeah. what, the, 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 what, I mean, let's just call it how we see it. The broke, the brokies, mm-hmm. the broke artists mm-hmm. use the word team as an excuse for not paying people because they don't have the money. Yep. And they just yep. are like, let's, let me just get with a bunch of my broke friends and let's all just like have this broke thing together. Let's have this broke yeah. little bubble. You know, I had this DM yesterday um, and there was a guy who was like, yeah, I have like uh, 15 producers and like five engineers. No, you don't. And then you don't he was have like, so, them. And then he was like, so if you can, she was like, so you can send me B packs, but I'm not paying you anything until I choose one. And he was like, I'll write on them. I was like, I don't, I'm not, I'm just arguing on him. I didn't even give a fuck. Yeah. Um, I was just annoyed. I block him. Well, like not that. even, I, I, I don't like to like block people because I feel like then I'm, I feel like it's just too much energy for me. I'd rather just ignore it unless they start actually messaging me again. Then I would just fucking block them. Um, but yeah. Anyway, there's things like that where I'm like, you just that you don't understand the concept of team because <laughs> a, a, a team is a partnership. If there's two people on a team, it is a partnership. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it, it's not even worth going into, but like, I get what you mean. Like, it's just like, it's insane. So, you know, moving forward, what do you hope to see for yourself? You know what, right now we're just in, you know, we're in the seventh month, right? We're in July now. It's July 4th today. Uh, yeah. Which is fun. Happy uh, so, Day. Yeah. Hey, is that like, what do you guys do? You're in Canada. Like, that's not a thing, is it? Yeah. No, we had Canada Day, um, which right. is like Confederation for us. But that was on the first, the Saturday. But like July 4th, like, that's oh, just no, for us in the United anything. States. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. See how dumb I am to even ask that question? That was stupid of me to <laughs> ask. I, I should know that, but whatever, fuck it. So yeah, yeah. But like, yeah, so it's July 4th, we're in the seventh month, just about six months left yeah. in this year, 2023. I want to ask short term, yeah. what do you want to see happen for yourself? Yeah, like numerically, my goal for the first year is 10K. I'm pretty sure I'm going to cross it um, or surpass it. But that was my goal, like before we started um, working together. Um in terms of like others, I want to see more growth in terms of new clients, but I also want to um, keep working with the same people that I'm working with because I want to keep building with them and like build more consistently. Um, I think another goal also just to improve my skills. Like uh, the more that I get to mix, the more that I get to produce, like the, so, I'm learning so much just by doing it. Um, so just getting to improve and like keep going. And I think for me, it's really important to stay um, not necessarily patient, but like understand this long term because, I, like we said, I have two more years of school. So it just like understanding that the point that I'm trying to get to is to be self sufficient by the time I graduate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let's go long term. We'll go. We'll go stages. Yeah. So like, because I know you have two more years of university, and I know that like that end of university is a big like. I know it's in your head. Like, so what, what are your, what are your two year yeah. goals? So two year, 10 K a month. So I want to be making six figures by the time I graduate or by the time I'm full time, like done in school and I'm able to do this full time, like fully focus on it. Um, I think I, one goal that I sort of have is to develop my recording studio and make it more of like a one-stop shop. Like I was talking about this with Zach, another guy in our program. Um, And we were talking about, well, what he does, he records, you know, he records artists. He does the production, does the mixing and the mastering for like a number of people. And so I kind of want to get into the same thing. Um, But that would involve like down the line, like getting a studio separately, like outside of my my parents' house. Um, So we'll see because that's kind of a stretch. Um, But yeah, that's definitely an idea I have brought down the line. Um, but I really just want to keep doing what I'm doing right now. Like, I don't really want to let up what I'm doing until I feel like I've literally capped it out so hard. I can't, like, I can't send any more DMs or I can't like, there's no much more I can get out of what I'm doing. Then I'm ready to like elevate. Mm. You're going to get there a lot sooner than you think. 
you think? Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure you will. You, you, I'm getting there, not myself. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. get there. You will be getting there sooner. And it's not going to hit you when you expect it. And it's mm -hmm. not going to hit you very clearly. It's not going to happen. You're like, oh, cool. I totally need to hire somebody. It's not like that. It's going to be like, hmm. You know, especially with you have school yeah. mm -hmm. and a job, right? Part time or whatever. Yeah. So it's like, maybe you're, it's just like this, like this, maybe that you're going to go through. Like, maybe I should hire somebody. Maybe I should just cut a part time mm -hmm. job. Like, what should I, like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, you can always justify hiring somebody. You can always justify hiring somebody. You can always be like, yeah, I can totally, like, you could pay someone to do work. Is it the right thing to do? Not necessarily, but you can always justify it. Mm -hmm. So knowing that idea of like, you can always pay someone is kind of like, so when do I do it? It's not a matter of if you should mm -hmm. do it. It's a matter of when. So mm -hmm. financially, does it make sense yeah. to pay them? Do I pay them on commish? Yeah. If I pay them on commish, do I have even enough work for them to make a living? Do they rock mm -hmm. with me part-time? I'm just literally telling you shit I'm going through. I sent 112 yeah. <laughs> DMs yesterday. Yourself? Me. My thumbs. You just, wow. <laughs> I had crazy. to though. It was based on, because I didn't send any DMs really Saturday, Sunday. I kind of okay. sent some Saturday, Sunday. So it was like yeah. all of the new followers from Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I kind of had to go kind of through oh. like one and a half, two days of work, two days of new followers. Mm -hmm. And That's I had the two, right. And I had the two sales calls and I had uh, yeah. a one-on-one -on -one oh with God. Romari and I had our group coaching call. So I, that yesterday, yeah. the thought was like, shit, maybe I should hire somebody. <laughs> Cause it's like yeah. a lot of, a lot of DMS, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, but even, even where I am right now, it's like, I don't know. It's like, that's kind of my shit right now. Mm -hmm. You're going to hit. And I didn't expect it to hit now. Yeah. But I was like, Oh no, not till I'm at like 20 K a month income. That's when I'll hire somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I don't know. I'm kind of at this point now where I'm like, eh, I'm not there yet, but yeah. it's like, maybe I should. So, you know, I've heard when businesses cross, Sorry, no, um, I've heard when business cross that the hundred thousand revenue, that's tend to be when they hire somebody. Right. Well, like just case. as a rough case by case, is it a thousand dollars total yeah. revenue or is it run rate? So just, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. like you think you have these conceptions of when you want to take that next step because you hear it from other people, but then you want to take into account your own life too, because yeah. everyone's situations are different. For sure. Um, anyways, yeah. so we go on and on about that, but to wrap it all up, yeah, you know, just to wrap it all up, uh, you know, I just want to say I'm super proud of you. So fucking proud of you. You're fucking rocking it. Like I'm surprised in a Thanks, very lazy. good way. Yeah. I'm surprised in a good way for you. Not surprised. Cause I didn't think you had the ability to do it, but Ange, it's so hard to actually do it. A lot of people have the ability. You have it. I have it. Lots of people. I have tons of people I know that could do it and they don't. So there's a huge difference between yeah. having the ability to make some shit happen and then actually executing and then getting results is like, that's a whole nother thing. And I'm like, yeah. wow, like you're fucking doing it. Yeah. Thank you. It, it makes me so, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's more exciting. Like to me, every time I, not even just closing something, like just knowing that I'm doing it and then I'm doing the right things is enough to get me excited to send some DMs. Like, yeah. 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 Imagine in the next phase when followers come to you and you don't have to yeah, outbound. Oh my God. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. never, I never want to send a cold outbound again, ever. <laughs> and I want to get you there too. Like I want to get you to that point where you're running yeah. the ads we talked about and you're just getting floods of followers and now you're just DMing people who follow you. Mm -hmm. we're about to get okay. there yeah i'm i'm excited for paid ads um i'm excited to not have to send dms anymore yeah but in the meantime i'm still building my dream 100 so yeah. i have like a solid list of like places to find artists um so anyway i'm just trying to focus on the day-to-day -day. sure well you're doing a great job i'm proud of you happy for you and uh Thanks. yeah hey anyone listening yeah. to this like 
book a fucking call with me, I would say, right? Yeah, definitely. Shameless plug. <laughs> and when they when they come on the call, what should they be ready to do? Have your credit card ready. <laughs> <laughs> Pay up, motherfucker. Bring that payment <laughs> ready. Yeah. So yeah. You heard it from you from Ange. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I'm Ange, gonna start saying you. the same thing. For sure. Yeah. Bring some <laughs> bring some cash. Bring a card. Bring a card yeah. with a CBV on the back because we're we're rocking. We're gonna get rocking on this call. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, Andrew, you're awesome. Thank you so much for everything. And we'll talk soon. Yeah, for sure. Take care, Lee. All right, see.